The other day I did a video on why anything to the zeroth power is always one. I want to do it again a little bit different way and I'll put a link to the other video in the notes so you can figure out which one makes most sense for you. Um, but this time I want to try it from an algebraic explanation. So let's just take a look at these expressions. Each line is a different expression and I've just arbitrarily labeled them starting expression four, then expression two or three and then two. And then, um, so what I'm asking you to do here is what is the operation that I'm performing each time to go from one expression to the next? Shouldn't be too hard. It's one of the basic four math operations. One more look and it is, of course, division. We're dividing by x every time. So in every expression, there is one fewer x. So when you're just looking at this visually, trying to figure out what's next, uh, not a trick question, but that zeroth expression becomes a little confusing because it seems like, well, I'm just subtracting an x visually every time. So I will subtract an x and then I will get nothing, right? Which we equate to zero. However, if I help you to see the imaginary one that is prefixing all of these x's, then you would see that you actually arrive at one. And then after that, you are dividing one by x. So again, it's just simple division and it goes on. So surprise, what we're actually talking about here is exponents and the explanation of why any um, number to the power of zero is one because what you're really doing in all of those cases is just reducing that number each time you go towards zero by that number and then continuing to decrease. Or if you're going the other way, then you're continuing to increase. And I think where most people get confused is because they're taught um, powers from you know positive powers and then the, the zeroth power is introduced and it's confusing because um, people sometimes intuitively expect it to be zero and all you have to do is then continue on to the negative powers to see the, the continuity between them. But a lot of teachers just don't do that for whatever reason. Uh, so this is a method that I think that's uh, very clear. So uh, another thing, just if you wanted to explore this from a different avenue, if you take 16 to the first power, you get 16. If you take it to a half power, surprise, you can do a half powers then you're actually doing the square root. Taking something to a half power is a square root. If you take it to a quarter power, you're actually taking the fourth root. So um, the fourth root of 16 is two because the square root of four is two and the square root of 16 is four. So then you get a little bit lower and then the numbers become less rational or completely irrational, but um, you can see that as we increase the fractional power so that the fractional power becomes closer to zero, that we on the result side become closer to one. So if we could take the infinite root of 16, eventually we would get to one, well, as we reached zero. And then likewise, if we take a, uh, a fraction and raise it to a fractional power, the, uh, the opposite happens, so our fraction starts out closer to zero. As we raise it to a fractional power, it becomes closer to one until eventually, if you were able to take the um, infinite root of that fractional power, then you would get one. So hopefully that makes sense. Just a quick thanks to uh, basicmathematics.com, which is where I found the nth root calculator that gave me all of those jarbled nonsensical numbers and then typeofile.com suggested the font to use to make the math expressions more clear. It's, um, I think it was Cambria. It turned out to be, I think, a pretty good choice.